Audio morning brief for the U.S. grain markets. It's October 25th, 8.21 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm Rich Possum for Critical Point. Okay, last night, the December corn prices uh, punched through last week's high. And the model is forecasting it's time for a level four interweek downswing into tomorrow. Uh, so I'm a little suspicious that we're just a little early on calling the more important level three top. And there's still more important level two, level one tops that can lead to lower prices in the mid-November to even mid-December. Okay, I think some of this support in these grains right now is a little revisit of pro-inflation talk over the weekend. We even had government sources, people to the Treasury, saying they think inflation can bring strong right into mid-next year. Uh, I think even someone at the White House even said something about maybe crude oil staying up to December, which is interesting enough. I've been allowing for that. Um, so I think some of this is kind of filtering in here, supporting commodity prices in general. I don't know that it's really that reliable or supportive in terms of the grains. In the grains, I see no change to the scenario that La Nina is doing nothing to hurt the Brazil crop. It's looking like the plants that are coming up are off to a great start. It looks like the planting pace is is right on course. Some of it's even faster than compared to a certain period of time. I forget whether it was the five-year average or just last year. Uh, so to me, the corn and soybeans are getting planted and there's rains and the soil moistures have improved even though there's still pockets and issues. And there's just no evidence this La Nina is working to create a bullish price scenario for global and U.S. grains. Argentina has issues, but Argentina has issues every year. And I'm finding it difficult how to really dial that in. Is it something more serious this time? And La Nina can make a bigger impact in Argentina. So we want to keep an eye on Argentina, but I'm not convinced we're really there at this point in time. I think if La Nina is going to create a bullish story, it's going to be December, January, February, March, okay, uh, for at least Brazil and maybe uh, Argentina. But Argentina, I, I realize, could start in sooner. Um, and then La Nina isn't that important, really, for the Northern Hemisphere, for the U.S., China, and all that. The, it's just the time of year. But the point is, people, when they hear La Nina... Right away, they start thinking, yeah, and what if it's still here next spring, summer, then we're going to have a crop problem in the U.S. And it certainly could work out that way. But the best forecast, as I stated in these weekly updates that was recently posted Friday, is that it's not really looking that way. I don't think I don't think Nina is going to be here to create a U.S. crop problem. Even if it is, I think it's going to be moderate. Uh, I think our crop problem isn't until 2023. But I'm leaving the door open for surprises. You have to. So, But I do think there's a little La Nina filtering in here. And I think there's this inflation story uh, present. And then there's the energy price worries that goes with that inflation. But it also can be a direct line to fertilizer prices in the corn market that I think is causing some support here. But uh, other than that, the dollar is actually against us. But I've also said for a few years now, I don't think the dollar is as important as a lot of people think uh, to the grain markets. And uh, so the bottom line is, yes, there could be strength here that I don't realize. Because as I warned you, the te weekly technicals are suggesting that if, that if the model's bearish, the model might not be so right. It might have a difficult time getting proof that it's right, that the market might be a lazy long-term bear market here for a while, okay? So we could see support. We could see very limited downside. We could see some of these sell signals not work that well. Nevertheless, we've got to make them because we're not, the model would make them anyways, according to that core demand. But we're not seeing the fundamentals yet to really tell us don't use those sell signals. So the bottom line here is, yes, it's up today. But I think you want to look at the low on Friday and Thursday. Uh, trade below that would probably be a sign we're on our way for a level three downside. And there is potential to put it all the way back to 510 in the December corn futures. Upside, I think, is going to be limited here to these 540s. I don't think it's really going in to the 550s. 
And I also think you can watch today's low, the overnight low, that if it trades below that, uh, consider a chance that at least the level four trend is down into tomorrow, but the odds are rising that it would be that level three downtrend we're looking for. And keep in mind, any level three could very well be the trigger or coincide with those more important sell signals or tops. Okay, so that's pretty much where we're at there. Now let's move on to the uh, March soybeans. And March soybeans are behaving a little better for us. They've rallied somewhat overnight, but they're just back to the five-day average. Uh, the, they're, they're off the high of last week, okay? And it's still looking like they're in a level three downtrend that can last at least a few more days. So I want to give the beans an opportunity here. But if you're concerned with missing something, the market's more stable. It's getting excited about any kind of news coming in on this inflation, La Nina stuff. <clears throat> then all I can tell you is trade black below, uh, say, the Friday uh, low. And let me double check uh, today's low as well. Uh, yeah, okay. So if it trades below 1235 and a half, then I would consider that this is no more than a knee-jerk uh, reaction up and that the market uh, will continue to work lower. I think upside is limited to last week's high to maybe just up into the uh, 1280 uh, is the highest I see here in the March beans. And again, we've got downside that could uh, take out the rally we've seen recently, and we could even see 1193 beans over time. And I think for those larger level one, level two trends, we do have to consider a chance beans can be lower into November to mid-December, right along with corn. Uh, now, on the wheat market, uh, we're seeing more strength there. And I'm actually pleased, even though I called the top, I wanted to see a little more upside here for those larger trends. At any rate, last week, I might have told you 760 upside. Well, that was pretty close to the Friday high. And the next level is at 765, uh, 66. And we're there now. And then the next level is about 771 and three quarters, make it 772. <clears throat> so we'll watch those levels. And that when it gets up into that 772 area, it would be in the prior higher objective that was not met, uh, what, three weeks ago? Okay. And I think that could still hold as resistance. Now that level, however, goes up into the 780s. Okay. So maybe there's that much upside. But we're really starting to stretch the rubber band on the short-term technicals. The model's still saying do for level three top, also do for level two, level one tops, and even a long-term top. And uh, so the bottom line is we can roll over in the next few days here to get a little more in line with what I think is going to happen with corn and soybeans. And wheat can come down in around mid-November. Uh, it's likely wheat will bottom ahead of... Uh, corn and beans. I don't think wheat will be continuing going lower into a December low if corn wants to be uh, weak for that long. So we're up against a situation here when these markets are due to come down, but we're seeing factors that the downside could be quite limited. But these are important enough signals we have to give them anyways. The model would always trigger them no matter what. And we just have to consider the possibility that just maybe it could be more bearish uh, or be or be normal for the declines of where we've got those lower objectives. But in the back of my mind, I keep telling myself, yes, but also consider the downside might be more limited, we think, because we do have some technical evidence on a weekly charge for at least corn and soybeans, but they are oversold or somewhat oversold. It, it can be limited, more so soybeans than anything. Soybeans is quite oversold on these weekly indicators. It's understandable that we could get some kind of technical bounce here. But will we get the fundamentals? Will we get the news to drive it? And the model saying, just not seeing it as bullish enough, it wants to remain bearish into mid-November to mid-December for these markets. So let's see where we get today. It looks like they want to pop these things, but uh, any kind of negative reversal here uh, will just encourage me that we're on the, the right track here and keep an eye on uh, the energy markets. That may be a, more of an influencer right now with this inflation talk, but I think that could go away uh, quickly in terms of the grains l flipping away from oil and looking at something else. As for the oil market, for all I know, it's going to $85, maybe 90 It's going higher well into November, maybe to December. 
Um, it just looks like a minimum variation trend. I took a couple of quick shots at it to pick a top and it just wasn't there. Okay, uh, There was just a nice little round of selling and then it was gone. Uh, there really isn't enough supply selling going on there. So it's probably going to be sustained uh, for a while yet, but uh, I do think the energies will be lower next week or next year. <laughs> so anyways, have a great day. Past results, not indicative future results. Give these bulls a little chance here in the grains. Just keep in mind, nothing has changed yet in terms of it is time to bring these grains back down somewhat. Thank you.